one that this person ultimately will touch. Ultimately, we are all going to touch someone's life. The reason I came into teaching is because I want to, I want to touch people's lives. And if I were to begin to express to you how many lives I have touched, we would be here until next year. You think that's an exaggeration, but um, this is my 13th year at Coral Park. I came here in 1999. I'm ending, actually, no, no, I'm ending my 14th year. So just um, extend that over 14 years and all the students and you'll see how much um, that this has been. When we reprove, we risk saying the hard thing. It is important to point out that what needs to be addressed um, and no, when we risk saying the hard thing, what occurs is that we sometimes point out something that someone else refuses to confront, and you are bold enough to confront it, or someone is bold enough to confront it in you. How valuable are friends who love us so much, as um, in 17th century writer Sir Francis Baker wrote in his essay, he says, the best preservative to keep the mind in health is the faithful admonition of a friend. The best preservative to keep the mind in health is the faithful admonition of a friend. I hope you all have at least a few friends who are, I mean, who you have developed such a relationship with, who are happy to reprove you when they see you're going wrong. If you don't, I'm really sorry for you, um, because you do not have that watchful eye of someone who loves you enough to tell you the truth. And if you don't, you, uh, you need to find someone. One thing that I can, I mean, I, I can assure you of is that when you see someone who, when you see an adult, rather, who repeatedly makes bad choices or have bad habits that they encounter, I can assure you that that person in their youth was not reproved by someone. Or if they were reproved, they, re they rejected the reproof. One of the key things, which is why I, I, I begged you all to come, is that as teenagers, we feel like we know everything and that adults know nothing. And that could be, that there could not be a worse position to have yourself in. If you reject reproof, you risk the possibility of a couple of consequences. First, early death. Early death. Whether by the choices that you have made or by choice of someone else in the midst of your wrong choices. Second, when you reject reproof, you actually are shown that you despise yourself. When you reject reproof, you're actually showing that you despise yourself. Someone in life who consistently shows bad habits are showing themselves that they, they did not have someone that, they, that could mentor them or, or were mentored by someone. If you don't have a mentor, I, I plead to you that you find one, as I oftentimes say in class yesterday. You need a mentor. You need someone who is going to be there to look out for you and who is going to be there to direct you in the way that you need to go. A question that you must consider. Are your friends wise friends? Are they, um, are they good for you? You know, evil company corrupts good morals. You keep running with someone who's undisciplined and make bad choices, you ultimately are going to be the same way. When you encounter someone who is understanding, you've encountered someone who has benefited from the repeats of someone in their life. Their mentor, their peer, their parents, their spouse, somebody has mentored them and they have listened.
In closing, I want to point out four things and a, a couple of foundational statements that you want to keep in mind. Reproof has to do with caring enough to confront, exhibiting tough love. We have this misconception that love is soft <coughs> and whimsical. No, sometimes love has to be tough. You have to put your foot down and say, no, that's it. That is love. And sometimes that looks like, oh, that's hate. And it <laughs> could not be further from the truth. Uh, reproof has to do with speaking the truth at the right time, for the right reason, in the right way. Saying the hard thing to someone we love help, helps them understand that there is a blind spot in their lives that is detrimental to them or to others. foundational principles as we, as we end. One, a fool rejects his reprover's discipline, but the one who regards reproof is sensible. A fool rejects his <coughs> reprover's discipline, but the one who regards reproof is sensible. Two, grievous punishment is for the one who forsakes the way, who hates reproof, he who hates reproof shall die. Three, he who hears, listens to the life-giving reproof will dwell with the wise. <coughs> the one who neglects discipline despises himself, but he who listens to reproof has understanding. Final, <laughs> faithful are the wounds of a friend but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. The point of that is the following. And um, I, it may sound backwards when you listen to it, but it really isn't. You can trust the wounds of a friend. And when I say wounds, I don't mean physical wounds. I mean that when, a, I mean when your friend gives you tough love, it hurts. But you remember it, and it's there to guide you in your future as you go forth. That is the wound of a friend. An enemy will flatter you with words, but at the heart, they despise you. So the point is, you can trust the wounds of a friend. You say, but I don't know who is my friend. Well, life allows you to know who are your friends. Just like uh, when a baby is born in the world, immune, um, those people who are, at, uh, I mean, who are, who are advanced in biology, their immune system is not developed. How is, it, how, how is one's immune system developed? By being, uh, I mean, by confronting viruses. Then it goes, ah, I know, I recognize this, I am not going to go that way anymore. And it defends. So your immune system is developed by going through hurts. Well, you go through hurts. But through the hurt, you find out who really are your friends. And if they say something to you, faithful are those wounds. But those people that flatter you, beware of them. I hope that you'll take those words to heart, and I hope that, they will, that uh, they're instructional to you. I thank you so much for giving me a hearing, and my heart overflows with appreciation.